First thing is I want to apologize about the quality because I'm doing this with my phone. But uh, anyway, this is my 1,000 mile review-ish on the Hawk 250. Um, honestly, I really like the bike. I don't have too many complaints. Nothing has really went wrong on me other than the basic stuff that everybody talks about. Um, I replaced the carburetor, up the jets. Uh, I put on a better chain. Um, I changed the gearing. I have a 45 in the back and it comes with a, a stock 50 and then I have a 17 in the front and it comes with a stock uh, 15. Um, the 1550 did okay, but it, it just, honestly, I, if I had to do it again, I'd probably just put the 17 up front and leave the stock 50, but, um, the 1745 does pretty good. Um, this is the 2019 model. Um, I haven't had any gas leak issues like people have complained about. Um, the gas tank, I've had it off of there a couple times. It's in mint condition still. Um, the motor runs like a top. I am not nice to this bike, um, especially for the first thousand miles. Obviously, I've got more on it than that now. Um, but I have not been nice to this bike, and it just keeps on putting along. Now, obviously, a thousand miles isn't a lot yet, so I plan on coming back at 25, 5,000, and then 10,000 if it makes it that far. Like I said, no real complaints. This is probably going to be a crappy review for you guys because I have nothing to complain about. It's been great. Everything that's been wrong with the bike is stuff I knew about going in. And I, I don't know what's changed like on the 2020 model, but on the 2019 model, the only thing that needed done was the carburetor and the sprockets. And that was it. Other than that, you could have rode it as, as is. So for an extra 50 bucks, you got a nice bike. Um, I did put on the aftermarket exhaust. It makes it sound a little better. Um, the performance improvement is minimum. I mean, you can tell a tad bit, but if you don't, if, if, if you're fine with the stock sound, I wouldn't worry about changing it, to be honest with you. It hasn't done a lot. Um, I did away with the air box and put on just the, the filter pod there. And with all of that, with changing the exhaust and putting on the, the air pod, I ended up having to put a 120 jet in there. Now, when I was running everything stock, I still had the air box and the old uh, exhaust system. I had a 110 and it ran really good with the 110. Um, I did upgrade the spark plug. Again, the spark plug that came with it was honestly probably fine. Um, my brake pads and rotors are still doing really good. I did change out the tires. Um, just something a little less aggressive more more dull dull sporty i can do i can still do off-roading just a little bit more of a comfortable ride on the road uh the knobbies actually do okay on the road once you get up a little bit higher like when you're 45 and under you honestly can't even tell you have knobbies but once you get up to 55 you can feel it a little bit um if you're okay with the knobbies and i it, it doesn't it didn't make me feel uncomfortable if that makes sense so but they're going to wear quickly on the street. Um, mine are still in pretty good condition because I swapped them pretty quick. Um, I have took this thing through mud bogs. Now, keep in mind, I still had the air box on it. And I had water up. I mean, you, you can't really see anymore. But I had water up to here on the motor. And was tight. Didn't have any water anywhere. Um, and I got out too. I did not have to call anybody. It pulled me out. I still had the knobbies on now. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do that now. I would be fucked. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been a great bike. Um, the only other thing I've really done to it is the aftermarket cluster here, which is really nice. I just put it on there. As you can see, there's only 13, 13 miles there. But it is fairly accurate. It's off by three miles an hour, I believe. Pause this a minute. We got a jogger. All right, jogger's gone. Um, the only thing I've done to it for me, which is nothing you need to do, is um, I put a phone charger on here that also holds your phone. It just connects right into the battery and it has an on and off switch so it's not draining the battery constantly. Like I said, I replaced both the sprockets, the carburetor, 
cluster. I put on brush guards. Um, I did change the grips. Everything I'm spitting out is pretty much optional other than the carburetor. Um, the, now, for things that went bad on me, was pretty much just the stock cluster. Um, it was off big time. The speedo, like by 15 miles an hour, it was bad. Um, and the gas gauge quit reading, which I thought was wiring this whole time. But when I hooked this one up, the gas, the gas gauge works. So it was obviously just that cluster. So my biggest complaint with this bike was the stock cluster. And if that's my biggest complaint, that ain't no big deal. This thing was 95 bucks. Took me, I'm not the greatest, so it took me about an hour. Um, you guys could probably do it faster. Same thing. The exhaust took me about three hours, and that is just because I ended up having to have my, uh, well, tried to have my friend come over and sit on it because it was really hard getting this, uh, you probably can't see, but getting the, the bolt line back up, you had to use one hand to raise the muffler and then shove the bolt back up in there. And I just wasn't quite strong enough because I'm not, I'm not a big guy. But um, if, if you're a big guy or if you have someone to sit on the bike for you, because I was lifting the bike up. Like every time I tried to get in there, I'd lift the entire bike up. So it took me a minute. I ended up sitting on the bike, pulling it up with one hand and shoving the bolt in there with the other. Man, I, I feel like I'm missing something. I really do, but I'm, I've been really happy with this bike. I really don't have any complaints. Um, the back sprocket, everybody complained, well, from the older models, would complain that the back sprocket would come off here and pretty much while you're driving, which could be very dangerous. I've never had any problems, but I did swap it out almost instantly. Like I drove maybe 10 miles with the stock sprocket. So maybe that's what saved me or maybe the 2019 model just fixed that problem. Because, I mean, the only thing that really holds this in here, these, these, the bolts here, these are just cushions. That's not actually holding anything out. It's this snap ring. I know you probably can't really see, but there's a snap ring right here where I have my finger. And that's the only thing holding that sprocket in. And those, uh, the bolts are just a cushion, so it's not, you know, like freely rotating. But they don't hold it in. If you take that snap ring off, those bolts just pull right out. So, which is kind of a weird design in my opinion. I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with other motorcycles of what they do. It sounds stupid to me, but I haven't had any problems. That over a thousand miles now, so I guess take it or leave it. Um, the suspension, in my opinion, is pretty decent. I've had people complaining about that too. Um, I weigh 220, or at least I used to. I'm not sure now. I weigh 220 and I have not bottomed it out that I know of. Um, I did replace the tail light to an LED blinker, so it blinks like three times and then stays on just to grab people's attention. Um, because at nighttime it's fine, honestly, but during the daytime I just really wanted to make sure people knew, you know, I was, I'm, I'm stopping because I didn't want to get rear-ended. Um, the turn signal lights are decently bright. I didn't replace anything in them. I still have the stock headlight. I've been thinking about replacing it, but I don't do a lot of night driving. Uh, the, the small night drivings that I have done have been in town and I have street lamps. So it's been fine for that. Cars still know you're there. You can see, I did take it on a couple back roads. Um, you can see, you have to use your brights the whole time. But like I said, if you, if you don't plan on doing a lot of night riding, I don't see a point in replacing it. If you are, then yeah, that might be one another thing you want to replace. But for me, it just drives during the day, no point. It's, it's good enough. You know, you can see it when it's on during the day. Like, it's, it's bright enough. Man, I really don't know what else. The seat is fairly comfortable. I've taken it on a two-hour ride before, and I'm not going to lie, my butt hurt a little, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't excruciating. It's a solid bike. It's definitely a big step up from what... The older models were because i know there was a lot more problems my motor my motor mounts are all perfect i check them that that, that does worry me because i've heard a lot of people their motor mounts breaking um i check them almost every ride they're solid um i did loctate almost everything when i put this together i do recommend that i've only had one thing vibrate out and that was my fault i forgot to loctite it people will tell you to use the red 
I used the blue. The red is a bitch because you are going to work on this thing. It's a bitch to get out of there. I recommend using the blue Loctite. It keeps everything in there just as good. And, you know, you'll be able to get it out of there with your own strength and not have to be a gorilla. Um, honestly, yeah. I I've been fairly mean to it. I mean, I haven't took it off any jumps, but when it comes to the actual engine and revving it up and everything and pushing it as hard as it can go, I've been mean to it. Um, top speed I have personally hit was 70. No, 65. I take that back. I'm sorry. So top speed, I, I guarantee you can get it to 70. I know there's people that's gotten them to 80. Um, top speed I hit was 65, and it was it was honestly pushing the motor pretty good. So if you're looking for something, it accelerates great. Like um, you know, it, it's got plenty of torque, especially if you leave the stock 50 on the back and just change it to a 17 on the front. Plenty of torque. Um, I never have problems going up hills, but top speed is definitely lacking. At the same time, you don't need to be going 120 miles an hour down the highway. It's, that's stupid. <laughs> so it, it cruises at 55 really well. It takes the hills pretty decent. Um, the carburetor took a minute to figure out because, but that was mainly me because I kept changing things. I changed the exhaust and I changed, you know, I got rid of the air box and I just had to keep changing jets. Now that I'm done, it's at the 120, runs great. Don't have any problems with it. Uh, as you can see, I've got plenty of videos of this on my channel if you guys want to check any of it uh, running. Um, I have a new one that I'll probably upload. I'll probably go ahead and upload it after this. I took the video before this, but I'll probably upload it after this. Uh, I'm going to cut this out because I'm starting to ramble. If I think of anything I missed, I'll put it in through text. Thank you guys for watching, and I, I wholeheartedly recommend this bike. Especially if you're low on cash. This was like 1300 bucks, and I threw an extra to get it where you need to get it an extra 50 so 1350 in there uh, And if you really want to play around with everything, let's say I'm just gonna give you a rough estimate and say with everything I've done to the bike that you don't need to do but everything that I've done to do just for quality of life probably have $1,600 in this bike altogether and That's cheap. I mean for a brand new bike. You ain't gonna get anything cheaper other than the magician, but I've heard horror stories about the magician, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, now, if you have the money, yeah, you could go buy, you know, like a, a Honda CRF or something, but they're $5,000. Do you want to spend $5,000? If you do, then yeah, they're, they're quality bikes. But um, this is a great bike. I, I wholly, wholeheartedly recommend it. Just do your research. Don't go off of just my review. Do your research before you go into it so you know the problems that it comes with. And that'll save you a lot of heartache. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And this just just put in the basement for parts. Uh, with the rest of my bull crap. I know that's a really nice frame still. It's like brand new. I don't know what I want to do with it though. And uh, you know what? I'm just going to make this a twofer. Because I'm going to make a hawk video. Here's the old speedometer with 1,000 miles on it, or kilometers, not quite sure. And if it's kilometers, I think it's like 650 miles, which still ain't bad. Um, I did install the new one. Oh, well, as you guys can probably see from the review, because I'm doing this separately. But 1,000 right there.